I was sitting with my uh, friend Rebecca Carlson. That's the spokesperson for the um, the youth part of the Green Party here in Stockholm. Rebecca was like really swearing and angry about the our the Swedish um, weapons policy, how we're selling weapons to Saudi Arabia even though we know it's dictatorship and it's not and it's used against the people. And she was like, oh, sometimes I wish I could just build my own society and like show show the world that you can you can run a society with other values and uh, with uh, with other norms. And I was like, yeah, that's my idea. That's my dream too. And I've been talking about it a few years now with my friends. We want to go live in the countryside and build a community and and to to test out an alternative and and, and to run society or like a mini society with with other values. We just need a house. And she said, huh, maybe I know a house. And within a week, we came here with them. Me, Rebecca, and uh, my two friends that I've been speaking about this for a long time and their newborn baby. And we came to this gigantic 3,000 square meter house. And some of the people that had previously lived here, it's been a collective house since the 70s, they showed us around the whole place. And then we sat down after this tour and had coffee and they were like, so, do you want it? We said, shoot, let's do it. We Maybe we're crazy. We don't know what we're getting into. It's a huge responsibility. We don't have any money, but we could create an amazing space for a lot of people. And here we are, two months later, three months later, living in this magnificent house. We're trying to build uh, the ideal that we can't do in, in, in the rest of society. And it's a really big, challenge also because it's like okay from the most basic parts like how do we organize ourselves what structures do we want to have how do we make people feel welcome how do we create like a participatory uh, vibe how can people from the outside take ownership how do we create that platform so it's not ours it's everybody's but at the same time steer it towards uh, a clear goal yeah to, to show what can a sustainable world be like? What can a sustainable life be like? How can a, a whole house be zero waste? How can we uh, and everybody come to, who comes in here change their behavior towards uh, waste, for example, and start recycling everything and reusing everything? And how can we find a system with, with the water and food and everything and not leave a negative impact on the planet, but a, a positive impact? And at the same time work with uh, creativity, work with dance, yoga, painting, planting our own vegetables, become self-sustainable in vegetables. So we, we call it like a, um, an energy booster for people that are changing the world. Because <laughs> we really want to have a clear link with the city and with, with the world and not just like isolate ourselves in the countryside and, and live our own uh, sustainability bubble. But we want it to be like, okay, open for everybody who wants to, to come and build and make this place what they would want it to be. And also have a um, uh, knowledge exchange and knowledge transfer between different places and different people. And for me, it's also really important to work with um, like your spirituality and yoga. For example, for me, that's sustainability, to take care of yourself and to take care of your mind and your body and your soul and not just get carried away and, and trying to do something that's good for other people or good for the planet because a lot of people, me including, we're so busy with our work and trying to do good that then we just like burn ourselves out and we lose our passion and there's like no one bad person but the way society um, creates people we think that we need to achieve a certain role we need to get certain things so that we will be somebody and then once we are that person we still feel empty so maybe if you consume more products or whatever then you then you'll be happy but it's first of all it's completely unsustainable for the planet and for people producing these things but it's also not sustainable for ourselves because we're looking for happiness in the wrong place basically i mean this house it's gigantic and only like two or three people have been living here and then the last year is a lot of people like alcoholics and drug abusers have been living here so it's like been a lot of shit left once you get all the the crap out underneath everything was still really nice because this house has been the um, a lot of people that have wanted to do good things have been living here so it's been like the the seat for large uh, parts of the alternative environmental movement during the 70s and 80s and the solidarity movement. So you find so many cool old posters and books from like the 
when the Green Movement was starting in Sweden, basically in the anti-nuclear movement and all these things that we now like take for granted and maybe now we're the we're the next generation that that want the same things we have the same ideals the same dreams we also want to start living in the countryside and grow our own vegetables but we also i think we have the knowledge with us what happened and what didn't work for them and we have social media which is also like really cool that we can just get the word out there each time a group gathers and and sits around the the dinner table or in the garden, something is really happening in this meeting between people that maybe wouldn't meet otherwise and you left the city behind you and you come here and people take time for each other and take time for themselves and it's really like magic starts happening and I think it's a very good base for us to like working with changing, making the world a better place to, to have a physical place where people can come and meet and get inspired and reconnect to themselves and what's important.